Hey guys, it's Fayon back here with another video today. I wanted to share with you guys some simple but very effective exercises that I have used to really strengthen up my calves and my feet. So I've really given them a focus because over the past couple of months during the summer, I've got heavily into capoeira practice. I was sprinting for a while and what I was finding was my feet were really fatiguing and were the weak link in the chain. When I was moving around, especially in capoeira, trying to do side kicks, trying to support myself, pivot on one foot, I would pull up with really, really sore feet. And because my feet failed me, then I couldn't complete movements because my base of support was not strong enough. And then also in sprinting, when I was trying to sprint, keep certain positions, then my feet couldn't keep them as well because they would fatigue. So I gave them a bit of a focus I asked around for some tips, including from my teacher as well. That's made a huge difference in how I can express my movement because I've been working so much on my hip mobility and strength for the past couple of months. I didn't have any problem with that, that my feet were the limiting factor. So if it happens to you guys, I hope these ideas are going to help you. I hope you guys enjoy and we're gonna get started. Let's go. The first exercise is a wall resisted straight leg calf raise. This may look really simple, but I really prefer this compared to a normal calf raise that you might do off a ledge or a raised surface. I like this wall version for two reasons. One being you can angle your body away, that is walk your feet out as much as possible until your heels can hit the ground and max out your dorsiflexion and that way you can train your calves at their end range. Two is in this variation, you don't need any weights. You can just push hard against the wall and this means you can vary the resistance to your level and you can vary the resistance even from rep to rep so that you can maximally fatigue your calves. To make it even harder, you can either walk further away from the wall or you can put one leg over the other leg so that this becomes a single leg calf raise. Now the next one is similar except you're going to bend the knee and pretend like you're sitting in a chair and then with that bent knee position keeping the bent knee you're going to perform the same calf raise. This one was a game changer for me. I always did my calf raises just straight leg and it wasn't until I started performing these bent knee variations that I realized what I was missing out on. This variation really challenges the soleus, one of the primary calf muscles, and you'll feel it a lot more through that feet as you push up into that plantar flex position. This one really helped strengthen my feet. To make it harder, you can either make this into a single leg variation, otherwise you can push harder against the wall. Make sure you don't break the angle of the knee so that you keep that 90 degree bend as much as possible when going up and down. Tibialis raises are another simple addition which have really helped the development of my calves. Because of these, I haven't suffered from shin splints and they have really made me feel a lot stronger pivoting and supporting when doing capoeira kicks. Pretty simple, you just want to make sure you're going all the way down and all the way up to max out the range. Otherwise, you can adapt to your difficulty level by how far you are away from the wall. So closer to the wall is easy. Going further away to the wall and pushing against the wall will make it a lot harder. Both these and the calf raises I find to be very effective in high repetition ranges. So somewhere in between 20 to 30 reps each set. Other than developing strength, we also want to develop power within our feet. These straight knee bounces may look ridiculous, but they have been punishing and super effective in developing power in my calves and my feet. You need to lock out the knee and avoid any knee bend. This means that you'll be jumping with your hips rather than jumping with the muscles from the knee down. Think of it like a straight leg calf raise and you're exploding only through the feet. This makes it a lot more difficult. When you first try it, you'll almost find it impossible to generate much power. So keep on trying. As you get better, you'll be able to keep less and less knee bend. And you can see here, even as I fatigue, then my knees start to bend. The variation on this is to keep a dorsiflex foot as much as possible whilst you keep that minimal knee bend and then bounce up and down. 
this is a killer. It absolutely burns your whole posterior chain. You look ridiculous, but you will feel how much this affects you. So the difference in this one is you want to actively dorsiflex as much as possible. So the same feeling that you got with the tibialis raise, you want to actively pull your toes up towards your shins as you bounce up and down whilst keeping a locked knee. Developing power here gives us more options so we don't just have to jump in a triple extension pattern from the ankles, knees and the hips, but then even from these little hops, we get better at rebounding power through the ground. Other than power, I was also after developing balance and stability through the foot. In a kneeling position, you're going to come up to the ball of your foot and then try to balance there by raising your other foot off the ground. If this is too difficult at first, you can either stay in the kneeling position or you can raise one foot and then tap it lightly on the ground as support whilst you gain stability in that other foot. To make it harder, you can extend the leg to make a longer lever and then you'll really start feeling it in the foot and all sorts of funny places as you battle for stability through the foot to keep your position. Remember, when you're adding stuff into the program, you got to think overall about load management as well. So when I put these in, I wasn't smashing them every day because then, yeah, my feet would just never recover. So I just started off with once per week and then I upped it to twice per week when I was feeling like it. But I was always wary about what I was doing in the rest of my program and training. So with simple and effective exercises done infrequently so you can recover it can be very powerful to help strengthen up the weak links so i hope you guys give that a go i hope it was helpful remember if you have any questions you can just send me a message comment in the section below otherwise you can reach me at the passivehang.com i'd love to see you in there in the forum the active hang that's where i hang out and a lot of other guys do too so hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one otherwise remember to subscribe thanks guys